Ever wondered why you have to go to sleep? Ever heard someone snore so loudly the room rumbles? We're about to tell you why. This is a case for investigation ouch. You spend a third of your life doing absolutely nothing. I'd hardly call picking my nose nothing. I'm not talking about your disgusting personal habits. I'm talking about sleep. All animals do it, including us, and it's essential for life. So to find out more about it, we're going to bed. To discover what happens when we sleep, we're spending the night in this special sleep clinic. But first, we need to get wired up by a team of sleep experts. All this equipment will give us information about what our bodies do when we sleep. I suppose you're also going to have your bear wired up. Of course I am. Mr Grumble has a lot of trouble sleeping sometimes. Monitoring us will be sleep expert Dr Wahab Dehamet. So sleep is not just sleep. There are different types of sleep. Absolutely. And some of the types of sleep relax your brain and recharge that, and other types of sleep recharge your body. Basically, yes. And that's why we, that's why we need sleep. Hi, Chris. Hi, Zand. It's time for us to go to sleep. Dr Waheb sets the computers up to record the night ahead, and I'm hoping this will prove, once and for all, that Zahn snores. He's always denied it. Mr Grumbles knows I never snore. Hey, Mr Grumbles. In a single night, your brain cycles through different types of sleep every 90 minutes until you get up. You'll start with a light sleep. This lasts around 20 minutes, and your breathing and heart rate slow down. You can still be easily woken at this stage. Then you fall into a deeper sleep. It's at this stage where some people walk or talk in their sleep because their body is still active even though their brain is resting. And then you start REM sleep, which stands for rapid eye movement. It's in this stage where your brain is organising itself and you'll have a dream or two. And then your body repeats this sleep cycle about four or five times in a night. Next morning, and it's time to get up. Other people say I snore, but I really maintain that I don't. I think they're all liars. All will be revealed shortly, Zand. I didn't sleep very well at all. We're both looking a bit weary. Oh, dear. Let's find out why we're both so tired. Press this line here. That's for when you were awake. And then here you slept. That's different sleep staging. And then here you were awake, and then you slept again, and then you were awake. So in terms of a good night's sleep, I only had, what, two and a half hours. Although I was in bed for six hours, I only was actually asleep for two and a half, and that is just not enough. And not only does my body feel very tired, my brain feels really thick-headed and unrested as well. So how did mine compare to Chris's? You had more sleep. And how long did I sleep? Four and a half hours. So I got twice as much sleep as you. But even four hours sleep isn't enough for your body to rest, especially when you're young. Children need at least eight hours because you're still growing and your body needs to work harder. Chris and I are adults and we can get away with less, but it still makes us feel very tired. What about dreaming? How do we compare on that? Well, Chris, uh, I don't think you had a dream at all. Xand, you had two. Although I had a full sleep cycle, it was pretty restless, and I just didn't dream, which can happen sometimes. But look at this section of the graph. I had lots of rapid eye movements, and this suggests that I was dreaming. How long were the dreams? They, they well, short dreams, or...? One of them is half an hour. Was half an hour. Really? Yes. Half an hour of dreaming? What about snoring? You did a snore. Sorry. I did? Yeah. OK, Zond, there's the proof. You do snore. Oh dear. How much of the time was I snoring? 7% of the night. Not everyone snores like me, but people who do snore can't move air freely through their nose or mouth during sleep. So the air vibrates against the relaxed muscles in their throat and nose, and that's what makes that snoring sound. You sleep for a third of your life, but you're not doing nothing while that's going on. You're recharging your brain and you're recharging your body. So if you don't get enough sleep, that's going to affect everything you do and you'll feel absolutely rubbish. Ouch. Are you finding it hard to sleep? Finding it even harder to get up? Are your parents constantly having to nag you to either go to bed or wake up in the morning? 
Well, you come to the right place. This is Dr. Chris's one-stop sleep shop clinic place for all your sleep-related needs. Terms and conditions apply. Monsters under the bed will not be dealt with as a cause of lost sleep. Offer only applies to die-hard Operation Arch fans. Going to bed late and not getting up on time are things we all do occasionally. But if you're hitting puberty, there's actually a scientific explanation. It's not just laziness, or well, not most of the time. It's all part of becoming an adult. Now, to show you why, I'm going to need some spit and some more sleep. Now, leave me alone. These volunteers are going to demonstrate how puberty changes how you sleep. Meet Ashley and Emma. They're eight years old and they're our young sleepers. And this is Thomas, Megan and Alana. They're all 13, they're our teen sleepers. I'm asking them to collect samples of their saliva every hour between 4pm and when they go to bed. So, does everyone understand? Yes. yes. We need to spit in these pots. Yay! The samples our two groups are taking will allow me to monitor levels of a hormone called melatonin. It's 6pm, so I need to spit now. Melatonin is a hormone your body releases to make you fall asleep and get some rest. Good night! I've come to meet neuroscientist Dr Paul Greengrass. He's been analysing our saliva samples for levels of melatonin. What are the results then, Doc? The younger children, their melatonin was starting to be produced about 7.30 or 8 o'clock at the latest. So, that's why if you're younger, you get tired around this time, but it changes as you reach puberty. For the teenage group, their melatonin was not even being produced till about 10 or 11. And that's why they don't feel tired until much later on. But you have to be careful because some things can stop the melatonin doing its job. So we've actually got a body clock that's sensitive to light. If you start doing things with bright lights, you are managing to switch off your own melatonin, which is one of the problems. So screens like iPads and electronic high-tech stuff have a lovely bright blue light, which keeps us alert. And in the evening, it's about the very worst thing you could do. So the best thing to do before bed is to stay away from computer screens. But because you're going to bed much later than you were before puberty and still having to get up at the same time, that can take some adjusting to. If you yourself are finding it difficult to wake up, well, now you know there's a biological reason for it. You're not just being lazy. Good night!